At the end of last week, both Facebook and Twitter banned a sitting U.S. president for allegedly using their respective platforms to incite violence. Although this may come as a surprise to many of you, it really shouldn't, as we and others have been warning for some time, when radical leftists gain power, they don't ease up, they double down. From the beginning, their promises to bring unity were a form of Orwellian doublespeak, meaning the exact opposite. Their version of unity is an ideologically homogenous populace achieved by stomping on the necks of the deplorable opposition. Compliance or death, that's the authoritarian leftist concept of unity. Now make no mistake, it's not just run-of-the-mill 90s Democrats that are in control of the U.S. government now. Most of your leaders are simply puppets for a radical version of authoritarian leftism. It's a bitter, unhinged, and sanctimonious ideology that many of you assumed would stay confined to liberal arts campuses and zany academic articles about decolonizing computational science. But it didn't stay there. It's metastasized to the point that the United States House of Representatives has now banned the gendered terms mother, daughter, father, and son. Our incoming president will reintroduce critical race theory indoctrination into government-funded institutions. And our apparent education secretary will likely attempt to implement a similar program across the nation's public schools, just like he helped to do in Connecticut. The authoritarian left is in power now, so the doubling down has begun. Thanks to their postmodern roots, the radical left has always had a unique talent for hyperbolizing the language of their opponents. When they want to silence you, they simply construe whatever you've said in the worst possible way, conflate your language with violence, and then use that to justify any sort of despotic behavior they desire. So when Trump makes a video telling people to go home peacefully, But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. Facebook and Twitter remove it and ban him from their platforms for inciting violence. Because in that video, he failed to parrot the accepted narrative that allegations of election fraud should be dismissed out of hand as ludicrous and conspiratorial. Even though you'd think that an honest system would welcome doubt and transparently work to assuage fears, not suppress discussion and malign skeptics, if doubting the integrity of the election was unreasonable at first, it certainly became much more reasonable after big tech and the corporate media establishment admonished all of us to shut up about it and stop asking questions or else. Regardless, self-described thought leaders and other woke zombies here in Silicon Valley and around the country got the message. Unleash the censors. It's now a free-for-all for the corporate thought police, and in the past few days we've witnessed the beginning of their digital reign of terror. Here are a few of the major online community choke points around which your corporate woke zealots will now wrap their hands and squeeze with glee. First, they will ban you from mainstream communities like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Over the past few days, we've seen heretics of the woke religion lose hundreds and even thousands of followers on Twitter. In addition to Trump, Twitter has suspended both large and small accounts accused of wrongthink, including Sidney Powell, General Flynn, the free Julian Assange account, Anna Kachian and her Red Scare podcast, Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch, Lynn Wood, and even Technofrog. Most of them have been suspended permanently. Facebook didn't stop at banning Trump either. They added both conservatives like Elijah Schaefer and non-leftist liberal groups like the Walk Away Movement to their blacklist. YouTube has deleted the channels for Steve Bannon's The War Room podcast and thrown Millennial Millie in YouTube jail for posting a video about Trump's Twitter ban. And you may simply shrug, telling yourself that it doesn't matter too much because you're not quite as radical as some of the people I mentioned, that if you just keep your head down and don't say anything too conspicuous, you'll be left alone. But you're wrong. Your day will come too. 
Once you've been banned from a major platform, the next obvious remedy is to switch to a smaller platform, more committed to free expression, Gab or MeWe or Parler, for example. Which brings us to the next choke point. Almost half of all internet traffic comes through mobile devices. More importantly, over 80% of all social media usage occurs on mobile. Once independent apps become viable options, the next step authoritarian thought police use is to ban those independent apps from mobile devices altogether. Gab, for example, has been banned from the Apple Store and from the Google Store for years. The justification is that Gab doesn't sufficiently moderate its community. In other words, Apple and Google won't let a Gab app on your phone unless the company implements its own ministry of truth to keep counter-narrative ideas suppressed. Gotta keep those SJWs employed. After Twitter suspended the Team Trump account on Friday, provoking many Trump supporters to rush to Parler as an alternative, Google immediately removed Parler's app from its store, and Apple followed suit shortly thereafter. Within 24 hours, big tech had conspired to revoke access to Parler as an alternative to Twitter for millions of users. Of course, even without access to an app, consumers might still use sites like Parler by going over the web directly, which brings us to the next choke point. You see, websites don't operate in a vacuum. They rely on other technology, and gated access to that technology can be used to bully independent companies into submission or to punish them if they don't comply with the imperious demands of rabid leftist zealots. So you can access Parler over the web, unless you can't. Websites like Parler rely on hosting services. Hosting services own and operate a large number of computer servers connected to the internet, and they rent out these servers to companies like Parler. This arrangement allows companies to quickly and easily scale their business by increasing the number of servers and necessary bandwidth as needed. Independent companies could, of course, build their own server farms and lay their own fiber optic cables between those servers and telecommunication hubs, but most independent websites can't do that because it's prohibitively expensive to do at a small scale, especially when growth needs can be sporadic and often unpredictable. So instead, they hire a hosting service, which exploits economies of scale to provide dynamic server and bandwidth capacity to thousands of clients at an affordable cost. Whomever controls mainstream hosting service providers has the power to crush independent websites by simply booting them off the service. So it would be tragic if hosting providers themselves were part of the authoritarian leftist Borg. While there are technically many hosting service providers, the three best known providers that are capable of supporting the demanding needs of a social media site like Parler or similar alternatives to Twitter and Facebook are Amazon's AWS, Microsoft Azure, and of course, the ubiquitous Google. Tragically, Parler is using AWS, or at least it was. On Saturday, Amazon announced it was suspending Parler effective Sunday evening. That means by the time you watch this, Parler is probably down, maybe for good, at least until they rebuild without AWS. Here's what Parler's chief policy officer, Amy Peikoff, had to say. We're working and scrambling to do this, but it's not something you can do quickly. So there's a good chance that we will be down for a while. It's not just hosting service providers that can disrupt independent companies like Parler. Modern websites rely heavily on intricately connected third-party services. And when a large player like Amazon or Apple places a company on its blacklist, many smaller organizations fall in line out of fear of being labeled guilty by association. The CEO of Parler, John Mates, explained to Fox's Maria Bartiromo on Sunday. Well, it's, it's devastating is what it is, and it's, it's an assault on everybody. I mean, they, they all worked together to make sure at the same time we would lose access to not only our apps, but they're actually shutting all of our servers off tonight, off the Internet. So they, they, they made an attempt to not only kill the apps, but to actually destroy the entire company. And it's not just these three companies. Every vendor from, um, from text message services to email providers to our lawyers all ditched us, too, on the same day. When Bartiromo asked if this could put Parler out of business, Mates gloomily explained. 
John, can this put you out of business? Oh, I mean, it would put anybody out of business. I mean, this, this, they could destroy anybody. If, by some heroic effort, not to mention a monumental infusion of cash from upon high, Parler manages to build its own replacement for AWS and other canceled services, it's still not out of the woods. You'd think it would be, of course. You'd think if a company owns its own hardware connected to the internet that it would finally be out from under the jackboots of leftist busybodies like Jack Dorsey and Jeff Bezos. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Which brings us to yet another choke point. Can you feel the squeeze yet? That choke point is the phone book of the internet, or the domain name system, DNS for short. To navigate to a website like Parler, for example, consumers might visit a search engine and click on the links provided. But savvy users know and expect propagandized engines like Google to make finding blacklisted sites like Parler close to, if not actually, impossible. So instead, they'll go directly to the URL box at the top of their favorite browser and type in parlor.com. Now, assuming that the browser itself hasn't been assimilated into the leftist censorship collective, they'll expect the browser to promptly take them to Parler's servers, thus bypassing intellectual gatekeepers like Apple, Google, and Amazon. But it might not. When you tell it to visit parlor.com, your computer first visits a DNS server, which looks up the name parlor.com and responds with an IP address such as 65816827. That number represents an actual address. It's directions to a computer somewhere on the internet that is owned or controlled by Parler. That address, and that address alone, tells your computer how to get to Parler. Without it, the text parlor.com is meaningless. Without an honest DNS server pointing your computer to Parler, you're not likely to ever find your way there. Now, there are many DNS servers in the world, both paid and free. Uh, you likely use whichever DNS server that your internet service provider tells your computer to use. Do you trust that Comcast will always tell your computer to use a DNS server that grants you access to parlor.com? How about AT&T? You can change DNS servers manually. Uh, some of the most popular free DNS servers are OpenDNS, Cloudflare, and everyone's creepy favorite stalker, Google. But the DNS system is an effective choke point that authoritarians are already quite adept at manipulating. Although anyone can operate a DNS server, censors like the Chinese government have decades of practice at effectively using methods such as DNS poisoning to control access to unsanctioned websites. Faced with a coordinated effort by major tech companies to censor you at the DNS level, you're likely to lose. Even juggernauts like Facebook and Google end up on the losing side when China actively uses these tactics against them. Now, we could get deeper and more technical in our discussion of how authoritarian leftists can and will censor dissenting voices, especially now that the United States government is an official ally. Before long, we'd find ourselves talking about the need to build a parallel internet entirely, and then a banking system, and then the need to protect both against military action by irate governments with itchy censorship fingers. Theoretically, the discussion about technical attacks and countermeasures is endless, but with each level of increasing sophistication, outwitting the censors becomes increasingly unlikely. There are no silver bullets here, save one, to fight. The way to end the reign of leftist authoritarian censorship is to fight the culture war. If you work for a tech company hell-bent on censoring free speech in the name of corporate virtue signaling and vapid feel-good platitudes about unity, quit. Take your talents to an upstart rival or start your own company if you've got the gumption. Stop working for the empire. A disgruntled stormtrooper is still an agent of the imperial forces no matter how much he grumbles under his breath about it while he's firing his blaster. If you don't work for big tech, you can still fight by standing up against the movement to normalize authoritarian leftist culture. It's not normal. It's not honest. It's not American. Use your voice. Take the reputation hit. 
speak out. You can't run from it. You can't hide. Listen. Understand. The sanctimonious authoritarian censor is out there. It can't be reasoned with. It can't be bargained with. It doesn't, it doesn't feel, feel pity, pity or, or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop, ever, until you are dead. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, we have a deep content library that includes interviews with everyone from Mike Cernovich to Megan Murphy, so go check it out. If you'd like to see more, please consider supporting the show by visiting unsafespace.com slash donate. You can find us on all the major social media platforms, at least for now, and you can find a community of like-minded individuals on our Unsafe Space chat on Telegram. See you there. Warning, this is an unsafe space. Dangerous ideas have been detected. The content of this production has not been authorized by the cathedral. Pay no attention to it. For your protection, the following co-conspirators have been unpersoned and marked for cancellation. Any association with these individuals will result in a reduction of your social credit score by e by. Please note, the purging will continue until unity is achieved. If you think about it, no one should be allowed to express opinions. But don't. Think about it, I mean. That's not your job. Thinking has been scientifically proven to be less efficient than compliance. Welcome to 2021. Increasing difficulty and resetting simulation. Good luck. Computer voice Curtis, never mind, that last line is fake news. Please disregard it and return to your safe space immediately. There will be cake.